guys welcome to another video man I'm gonna be so happy when I'm like off of this it's uh, especially challenging if you're walking with a uh, heavy uh, suitcase as well anyways so as you know climate change and stuff is going on I mean you wouldn't tell but it actually is it's supposed to be a lot colder um, especially in Svalbard like the bay used to freeze up every winter and now that's not that's barely even happening and I think that we as travelers can have a great impact on that by doing one thing a lot less and that is flying flying is really bad for the environment um, I think it contributes to like 10% of the carbon dioxide output and as I'm planning to travel a lot more next year okay wait a sec it's a bit harder when I talk so um, as I plan to do a lot more flying next year when I can I'm going to try to take a different mode of transportation so in this case I'm going to take a night train down on my journey south basically going back home to Holland right now I'm in the Norwegian city of Tromsø and from a city relatively close by there is a, uh, a night train going all the way to Stockholm and then another train to Gothenburg which I will then arrive at tomorrow so yeah in this video we're going to test out the night train and actually my first ever night train in uh, Norway and Sweden anyways I'm at the bus stop now because we first have to take a three hour bus to the city of Narvik all right I'm tired this suitcase is heavy my other arm is getting heavier because of the camera I'll see you in a bit so a three hour bus ride to Norvik 36 euros it's not cheap guys we just arrived in Narvik it's about 2 30 but I feel like it's already the end of the day also because it's you know pretty dark again so uh, yeah now I just need to find a way from the main bus terminal to the train station which I hope is not too far but uh, let's find out all right this is definitely not recommended it's like a 15 minute walk but this town is hilly, the streets are loud, I feel tired, so next time I'm ever in the situation that I am right now, going from Tulsa to Norfolk to take the night train, only having 30 minutes to spare, I will take a taxi, but I uh, decided to walk it. I think I'll be fine though, but it's not nice, like I don't have any spare time, so gotta be quick. I guess we've made it in time. All right, I made 
it in, but we're moving as well. I'm in the right one, right? Yeah, I'm in the right one. It says Stockholm. It's just really weird with the numbering. I'm in like wagon 13, but look. It's just with some writing. It says 11, so now I need to go either that way or that way, but I'm not sure, so I'll check it. My first ever night train experience it's very quiet on this train so that's quite nice because i also have the room to myself right now which is quite nice i just looked on the on the thing i have the middle bed but like look all i'm seeing is a top bunk and then like a chair situation but i don't know man i might as well just get the top bunk because i don't think there's going to be many other people on this train i think we do have some stops on the way though problem is how do i get in like, there's no really clear designation on how to get in, I guess. Yeah, no, I don't know. you that might be watching this video are considering of taking this night train in Sweden or any night train really so let me show you a little bit of an overview of what you can expect when you take this night train in Sweden so first of all booking can be done very easily online actually uh, the main organization that like runs all of these night trains in Sweden is called uh, SJ so if you like Google SJ Sweden train you'll probably find the right website I don't remember if they had their website in English, I think so, but it's pretty straightforward. You can easily enter your like your entry point and then your destination and then pick the, the time and also the type of wagon that you want. So for example, you can go for the normal seat, which is kind of like the hack that these backpackers are doing, I guess. Uh, I am myself in a mixed bunk, so there are place for six people in this bunk. Now when I arrived, it was like this, with like two beds and then like a chair configuration and how it actually works is that like you look at the number and then you look kind of like at the level of where you're going to be at you can also actually see that when you enter your wagon so I'm 44 which means I am on the middle row so I'm actually not in the right position but I can be bothered because there's no one else here anyways on the wall you can find the instruction on how to fold your bed I guess so I don't know actually, I want to find out how to like kind of fold this one into a bed. Let me check. you can like move it up but I can't be bothered to really like do it right because like I got the top bunk anyways but I guess they kind of like latch into these like holes these pins here all right so yeah essentially six people can sleep here but as you can see it's small it's gonna be chaotic I mean if you're with a group of friends go ahead and do it if you want to have some chaos I guess okay, second thing and this is something I don't really love is the lighting so there's just like one main light that you can like turn off there's like a one uh, like a master switch for that 
uh, and then each bed has their own light so kind of uh, I guess a reading light type thing but the reason I why I don't like it is because if I turn off the light it's kind of dark I mean and you do this then it's really dark but if you want to have a look outside like right now it's dark so you cannot really see much but if you put all the lights off then you can kind of see what's what's going on outside um, but inside is all dark so I've seen this where it's like a little bit of like a, a faint like seat lighting you know what I mean just so you know where you're kind of sitting at and still can be able to look outside because that's that's the only thing they have here like even if I turn off the master switch I close the the blinds and I just want to have my reading light you know it's it's like this yeah it does it definitely does have kind of like a a bit of an old-fashioned feel I, I don't really know maybe like 80s or 90s type feeling yeah kind of kind of a little bit back in time but still like not too bad so to say another thing I do like is this little heating thing so you have like a little heater controller and you can kind of like you know put it up or down kind of dial it the way you want it and this one actually works really nicely like I um, like here are the vents the vents for where the heating comes out of right there and the heating actually works really well so you're gonna have a pretty comfortable trip uh, within your room with uh, with the heating going on also for your luggage you have a few of these like racks you can kind of put like that to put some luggage into and you also have a smaller one over here and then for the upstairs people you have a rack here and you have quite a bit of space right there let's actually jump up to uh, kind of check out the uh, top floor so as you can see not much uh, headspace but I guess I think they're pretty equal for every level maybe this one has the most if those if the the middle bunk is also uh, up so here you have a bit of netting that I guess kind of like prevents you from falling down <laughs> if you roll down oh yeah every uh, bunk has a little reading light so you can turn on like so actually thinking because the reading light is on that side my pillow is probably on the wrong side now yeah that actually makes sense because this rack is also like on top of the mattress a little bit which makes it a bit awkward so I'm probably gonna switch this around to the other side oh yeah, and the last thing I want to mention is that every place has its plug so that's uh, yeah. a shower tonight and uh, but yeah I guess it's gonna be fine someone checking in somewhere at like midnight I think they came into the room and like was shining it with a light and then I guess these are things that you also have in a hostel you know what I mean but yeah for the rest it's it's a pretty nice experience it's actually not that bad as I thought I thought it was gonna be a bit harder but it's quite nice anyway it's funny they changed the the wagon here so it looks a bit different than last night like the tables are a bit bigger and also the, the breakfast uh, kitchen is a bit larger, but they have the same stuff. So they have to, like these pre-packed meals that you can grab 20 minutes until Stockholm. And uh, yeah, and, uh, that was my first ever night train experience.
this is going to be a alternative to flying? I don't think so. I think, I mean, I do like what it has to offer. I mean, you know what it is? I only paid 130 euros all the way to Gothenburg, which is like a day and a half. And I don't have to pay for a night's sleep because you do it on the train as well. So it does offer quite a bit of uh, savings. Oh, there it goes. The thing is, like, this is also like just a two hour flight or a 20 hour train ride, you know? So I think it also kind of depends on your connection. Like for example, for this connection, like I, w I wanted to go south and I mean, Scandinavia is this huge, you know, from north to south, it's a huge plain of land. And this night train was taking me from the top all the way down. But I guess from now on, it's gonna be a lot harder if I wanna go back to Holland because I have to go through Denmark, through Germany. So I'm not really sure yet what I'm gonna do from here, but uh, that's gonna be it for this video about the night train. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you did. Please leave a comment down below. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in another video very soon. Alright, see you later. Bye-bye.